Hello, I'm Odin, and the prop that I'm gonna to make today is something cool for someone cool. It's Anna's frozen sword from Frozen 2, and I'm making it for the League for Hope. They regularly visit children who are going through health issues at local children's hospitals. I wanted a paper pattern to make the sword, but references were not easy. I saw very few pictures online. The trailer had just a couple of quick cuts, and the first teaser trailer was completely different. So I grabbed a bunch of screen captures from the movie itself, it's going to be the best source anyway, and I took measurements of the sword and drew out my pattern. I made my pattern about three quarters size. I want it smaller for a child to hold. There's a link to the pattern in the description if you want to make one of these too. For the core of the sword, I'm using a graphite golf club shaft. I make marks to cut it down, and I lightly sand the outside. Glue will stick better if it's not smooth and shiny. I also mark where I want the hilt and the blade to be. I plan on using 6mm HD foam for the blade, and I cut two strips a little bigger than the blade. And then I cut an angle down the middle on my bandsaw. I could also use a razor knife, but the bandsaw will make a more consistent angle than I could do by hand. I applied contact cement on those angle cuts, and once it was dry, I carefully aligned the two halves and then folded them together, making the peak that is going to be the center of the sword. I folded the paper pattern down the center of the blade so it can sit on top of my foam piece. And I drew on the sword outline. I only need it on one side because I'm going to cut it all out after everything is glued together. The golf club will go in the middle. I needed to fill the hole or the sword is going to look smushed. A piece of floor mat foam is just as thick as the golf club. Oh yeah, that's perfect. But it needs to be a long wedge shape to fit the void that's in the blade. All right. I set some aluminum angles as a guide on my bandsaw with enough space to fit the floor mat foam. Then I tilt the saw table so the blade is going from almost touching one corner to almost touching the other corner. And then I can run the foam through the saw, cutting a near perfect wedge of foam just as long as the blade. Then I cut an angle along the wedge to follow the golf club thickness. Oh yeah, that's, that's great. Okay, good. I contact cement the floor mat pieces to the golf club and I made sure the sides were straight, not all wavy and uneven. And then I carefully laid the halves of the blade over the core piece. Everything is glued down with contact cement. What I was careful of was keeping the center peak lined up with a golf club, and I didn't want to warp the end of the blade. So one of the best parts about any kind of con crunch uh, thing that you're doing or trying to make a video and put it out on time, anything where you're really kind of like, I gotta get this done, I gotta get this done. I gotta wait for glue to dry. I gotta wait for paint to dry. It's, ha. Ah. <laughs> Suppose I should get a hair dryer. With the blade stuck together, I can cut out the outline of the blade. This could also be done with a razor knife. The saw is just faster for me. Usually, anymore, what I would like to do is take a triangular dowel of foam and then just glue that right to the edge for the cutting edge because that's going to give me the easiest, the, the fastest, and the cleanest looking uh, cutting edge that I can get. But even if I use a smaller triangle dowel of foam, it'll bulk up both sides of the sword and it'll change its shape too much. Instead, I use a sander to carve the cutting edge into the foam, sanding each side to the middle, making that sharp looking edge that a sword needs. And doing it this way, I keep the proper outline of my sword blade. I use 400 grit sandpaper to really smooth out the sanded edges on the foam. The cross guard is made from two layers of 10 millimeter foam and then one extra layer of six millimeter foam in the middle. I cut a channel through the middle of all of it so the golf club can fit. After I contact cement all the layers together, I trace the outline of the cross guard and cut it out of the bandsaw. I increase the arms a little bit because I want them to be stable. I also glue together a box of six millimeter foam. I'll sand this down to make it a round grip later. These are not glued on yet because it'll be easier to shape them before they're attached. I use a rotary tool with a drum sander to round off all the square sides in the cross guard. And I was really careful to not nick the inside corners of those curls at the end. I use the same tool to round the corners in the grip and I tried to make it taper down a little towards the bottom end where the pommel will go. The pommel itself is just two circles of 10 millimeter foam glued together and then rounded just like the others. But because of its size, it's much harder to hold on to. 
I tested the idea of using the chisel tip on a wood burner to make the spirals that go in the end of the cross guard, but it just doesn't get a small enough circle for it to work. Instead, I change out the tip of the wood burner to something that looks like a round target, and I roll that tool and it makes the spirals. I glue all three parts on the same way, contact cement where foam touches foam, and Gorilla Glue where the foam is going to touch the golf club. To wrap the grip, I cut out two strips of 2mm foam, and I use contact cement to wrap them around the grip. I cut a diagonal line at both ends for both the start and the stop of the wrap. There are a couple of triangles on each side of the hilt and blade. So I cut two sets from 2mm foam and glue them on with contact cement. Typically, the next thing I would do is spray a coat of Plasti Dip to cover the foam so I could start painting it. But when Plaid Crafts heard about this project and who it's for, they rushed me a few colors of their new cosplay paint. It's called Plaid FX. Now this is a single coat of light blue painted directly on the foam. No primer, and you can just clean your brush with water. Then I mix a little of the light blue with some blizzard white. <laughs> the color name is perfect for this project. And I started to stipple the lighter color right over the dried blue. So all the low areas will stay that light blue, and all the higher areas become this really, really pale blue. And I'm just using a torn piece of polyfoam. If it leaves a little line, I tear that edge off, and I cover the entire sword in this nearly white blue. And after that coat dried, I stippled on the high places with a metallic white color. This is kind of the same idea as dry brushing, but different. It's difficult to see the effect on video, but you can definitely see it in person. I've got the sword painted, and I'm really happy with it. And I'm actually really happy with the FX paints. These are, these are working as expected, which is very cool, because I had some high expectations. But what I need for the sword is I need icicles. Safe icicles, ones that won't break, ones that won't poke. What I'm thinking about using is some polyethylene foam. I cut the very basic shapes for the icicles and then lay them out, and I start trimming the edges to make them pointed and rounder. And I also split some to go on either side of the blade. With my heat gun on a very low setting, I start to melt the edges of foam. The plastic melts clear and adds some sheen to the icicles without needing paint. To glue the new icicles to the painted blade, I use a clear five minute epoxy, and this works really well, and the icicles feel really secure on the blade. I would set things on the foam to keep it down while the epoxy set, and then I added little icicles on the side, that way it's not just the trailing ones you see from the back. A lot of the smaller icicles were not heat treated before they were glued down. Doing it now doesn't seem to bother the epoxy or the Plat FX paints but it still needs a little more to transition from the painted blade to the ice blade. So I created some foam confetti with a wire brush and carefully glued it down with some Mod Podge Ultra. After everything was set, I spritzed the sealing coat over all the ice, which seals the confetti in place. This frozen sword was made for a group called the League for Hope. The League for Hope is based out of Sacramento, California. Their mission is to bring costume characters to visit chronically ill children in local hospitals. They will work with the hospital staff to bring the experience that they are looking for, be it superheroes, princesses, pirates, mermaids, fairies, or movie characters. All of their volunteers are experienced working with kids who are going through major health or life issues. Hope heals and laughter is healthy. League of Hope's goal is to share all of that by letting kids be kids during their visits. How can I not help these guys? This sword is going to go off to them right now, where it'll start helping to bring smiles to children and families. This started out as a foam sword, but I think it's going to end up being a whole lot more. I'm pretty excited about that. Now, typically, when I finish one of my builds, I'll actually just hang it up here in the shop on display, or I'll take them to a con where some of you guys can actually see them in person. This sword, I think I just have to let it go. This is how Odin makes. Needs to dry still. So much time waiting for glue to dry. 
So, and what's it like making uh, cosplay stuff all the time? Oh, I spend a lot of time standing around waiting for glue and paint to dry. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I want to thank Patrick Hannon, Cody Gillum, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. Thank you, guys. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.